Hi, everyone, and welcome to the special simulcast of the Neil Haley Show and the Love Is Podcast. I'm excited to welcome the host of the Love Is Podcast, Kim Sorrell. Kim, how are you? And I know you're excited about our guest. I'm doing great. Thank you, Neil. And I am excited about our guest, Frankie Spice Morelli, who has actually started a movement. I think it's a movement. Wrote a cookbook, but it seems to be a whole lot more than a cookbook. And uh, and did it while in prison, got this whole thing together. And I don't know who writes cookbooks in prison. Frank, I think you might be the only one, but it, it's pretty impressive. And I think you wrote other books while you were in prison. And here you are out of prison and your book just came out. Congratulations on that and welcome to the show. Well, thank you very much. And we'd be glad to send you some more books if you would like to give away to some of your listeners or viewers. Okay, great. Wonderful. Great. Yeah. Uh, Art can definitely connect me to your team and we'll get we'll make sure that happens. Go ahead, Kim, with your first question for Frankie. Yeah. So so you uh have this cookbook. It's a mob cookbook and diet. You lost a hundred pounds while in prison. That is amazing. And um cooking helped you uh with protection. Is that right? Yes. I became friends with people such as Nikki Scarpo Jr. If you want to Google him, he took eight bullets to the chest and lived on a Halloween 1989. His daddy was little Nicky Scarfo, who was head of the mafia in Atlantic City in Philadelphia. I was also friends with Tommy Guns, Frankie the Ice Pick, Eddie the Eraser, Tyree the Gangster, rapper Get Paid Spade, uh, and, and se uh, several other mafia guys. And, and not all just Italian mafia. So, Frankie, were you basically uh, trained to be ready for prison? Like you could handle it? Like, you know, a lot of people just can't handle prison. Even myself yeah, at six foot 10 and everything, you know, over close to 300 pounds, former for a wrestler, I wouldn't be happy going to prison. I don't think, I mean, not happy. I don't think I'd feel safe in prison. I think I would be done. I would be ganged up on very quickly. Were you ready for it? No, absolutely not. I ended up very depressed. I had to see a psychologist and a psychiatrist. They put me on Ramo. And then and there, I decided I needed to change my life. So I started, you know, working out, exercising, and writing books. And then they put me as a suicide companion on the psych ward to help the really nutty people, even nuttier than me. But anyway, so that's how it came about. But um, nobody is ready for prison, okay? Uh, I, there would be six guys beating up two guys. Uh, I was lucky at the time. I was old, fat, and ugly because guys were doing things to other guys. If you were a, look, a good looking guy that I don't want to say on the air, but it was really rough. The things that would happen, you know, yeah, I can't even just. Wow. What I find really interesting, Frankie, is that you went to this maximum security prison you went for longer than a lot of people are sentenced for, for for your crime, and it was a white collar crime. And um, I thought maybe you'd go with Martha Stewart or a place like that. Well, I should have. In fact, Nikki Scarfo Jr. came up to me and said, "You must really piss somebody off." His exact words verbatim, and he said, "You shouldn't be here." And he goes, "I checked you out. You're a really good person." And the sad part of it is. I actually had 130 people write me letters that are good things I'd done for people in life. And when I finally did get sentenced, three of the families of people that I helped save lives while I was a suicide companion showed up and uh, vouched for me on my behalf. But unfortunately, I got a hanging judge that was considered the uh, worst uh, judges. So he put a guy 30 years for tax evasion. Oh, man. It all depends on your the attorney, the, the prosecution, too, Frankie. As if you watch shows, it's the true life. Like in, you watch Billions. I'm a big fan of Billions, and the same thing happens. People end up going to jail that really shouldn't go to jail, and they go for a long time. Yeah, well, the United States has the highest rate of incarceration of any place in the world. Russia, China, and India, which are far... Uh, more populous countries than the United States have less people than the United States in prison. We have 25% of all the people incarcerated in the world. So it's a big business, to be honest with you. Okay. Wow. Yeah. No kidding. No kidding. 
So while you're there, you uh, you got through your depression, you got help with that. Then you're helping other people, which I find very admirable. And then you're working out, you lose the weight, and you decide to write a cookbook. And it's, uh, but also about dieting, but it's great Italian food that's in the cookbook. How does that work together? Okay. Well, a lot of Mediterranean foods are good for you, like the soups, the salads, olives and stuff like that are all good for your heart and everything, okay? And then I have other foods like spaghetti and stuff like that, but you eat them in moderation. And uh, we even have desserts to eat on your cheat day. Because even The Rock, he might eat protein six days a week, but on the seventh day, he might eat three pizzas. So you can't sustain a really good diet unless you get a cheat once in a while. So, um, Frankie, yes, the cookbook, and that is all great, and everything is good, but it seems to be about more than just a cookbook. There's stories in the book. There's good things in the book beyond the recipes, and then you started this, really, it's a movement, right? Um, Mercy and Optimism Beyond Borders seems to be, yeah, go ahead, talk about that. Yeah, well, basically, everybody deserves a second chance in life including those of us who have fallen. And everybody has an addiction, whether it's chocolate, gambling, drugs, alcohol, or whatever. Um, And basically, there's three components of turning your life around. One, and first and foremost, is positive thinking, okay? Without positive thinking, you can't become successful. Then diet and exercise. And I helped a lot of people when I was on the suicide floor or the psych ward by setting an example myself. I would work out harder on the elliptical than anybody else. So then I would get other people motivated. Then I would listen because my dad was a guidance counselor. So I would listen to them and help them get over their uh, problems. Some of them were really, really messed up. And a lot of them had been abused as kids, okay? So they had horrific uh, lives, and and I helped them. Then in my book, I have stories of hope and inspiration. One of the young ladies that's featured in my book was diagnosed with autism at three years old, yet she's competed in the Miss America pageant. She's been on the marquee at Times Square, sang twice at uh, uh, Madison Square Garden, been featured in a movie. So no matter what you have thrown at you in life, you can overcome Uh, your problems. The other two people that that are in my book, they both also, they were abused as kids beyond what I can say on the air, okay? And they ended up getting hooked on meth. They ended up in prison. Uh, The one young lady had a baby. Instead of having an abortion, she gave it up for adoption. And uh, basically, she got out of prison. She became friends with her uh, biological daughter, Uh, She went to school, graduated summa cum laude. Uh, She turned her life around. Now she has her own insurance agency, which is really hard to get licensed when you had that kind of a background. And her husband was also abused as a kid. Now he's a top salesman for a huge uh, Ford dealership in Boise, Idaho. And he was the mentor in the uh, uh, residential drug and alcohol program in prison. And I became friends with him and I kind of mentored them. And I'm still talk to them about every single day. In fact, I sent them to Las Vegas on their honeymoon because they'd never been on a plane. <laughs> wow. Great, great, uh, great uh, inspiration. And Kim has an inspirational love question. Kim, go ahead and ask that question. Yeah. So uh, I had an adventure. I decided that I was going to figure out the true meaning of love. And so I took this 2,000-year-old poem that you've heard, I'm sure, love is patient, love is kind, does not envy, does not boast, et cetera. And I focused on one word a month to figure it out. And what I found out about love just uh, was so different than what I've ever been taught about love. And so I'm curious, in a prison situation and in having to deal with a judge that, that really was unfair, that you know in your heart was unfair, and uh, all this stuff that you've had to deal with in life, where does love play a role or does does love play a role in any of that? Yeah, love does play a, re- a role because if you don't have love, you're not going to survive. And I had love for my family and my my friends and I wanted to see them again. Um, 
my wife just passed away uh, December 15th. We'd been uh, married 43 years, and, and I wanted, uh, excuse me, we've been married 35, but together 43. We dated for eight years before we got married, but we were together 43 years. And love for the family gave me inspiration to pull through everything. Because you got to realize I was 2,000 miles from home. I really had no friends. I made a lot of friends, but it was tough. And if I didn't have love, I would not have made it through. Mm. So, so sorry that was the on your wife. Yeah. Wow. Great answer. Wow. Uh, now, Frankie, I think that the mission is there. You're such an interesting story. So are you still part of the mob in certain ways? Do you still have those connections, Frankie? Yes. Yes, I do. Uh, my grandfather made Dago red wine and he teamed up with the mafia guys in our County to get the KKK booted out of, uh, Canyon city, Colorado it was in the twenties and thirties. So, uh, I do have mafia ties. I'm not mob, but I have a lot of ties and the mobsters in the book gave me permission because now mobsters like to be bragged about in the olden days. They never wanted to be talked about. But in today's day and age, after John Gotti, they like to be bragged about. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. We appreciate it, Frankie. Thanks again. Your book is available on Amazon and all finer bookstores. Uh, thanks again, Frankie, and thanks for stopping by. Okay. And if you need any books, we'll be glad to send you some so you can give to your viewers. All right. I'm going to talk to Art about that. All right. You're listening to the special simulcast of the Neil Haley Show and the Love is Podcast, guys. Take care.